All our viewers tuning in at this moment, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Huda. I'm your host, Fuad Muhammad. We welcome on the show as well our dear and respected Islamic scholar, Dr. Muhammad Salah. Assalamu alaikum, doctor, and welcome to Ask Huda. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and thank you, Fuad. Barakallah fiqh, doctor. Just a quick reminder of our telephone numbers 00 202 248 or 249. Or you can write to us at us, that's ASK, at huda.tv. Okay, doctor, we start with Sister Madia questions from Bosnia. She says, from what age should a child start fasting? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi wa kafa, wa salamun ala ibadihi al-ladhina astafa, la siyama al-mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira, all praise be to Allah. We praise him and we seek his help. Whomsoever Allah guides is a truly guided one, and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can show him guidance. Uh, fulfilling the mandatory acts of worship becomes obligatory upon reaching or attaining the age of puberty. Mm -hmm. But it is important to practice before that. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, with regards to the prayers, teach your children how to pray or kids at the age of uh, seven and discipline them for not praying at the age of 10. So that when they reach the age of 11, 12, some, uh, some people attain the age of puberty at 9, 10, 11, 12, it varies, and they're ready to pray, they know how to pray. It is sad when you see some elders who are standing up in the line, looking right and left, uh, cannot stand uh, still, because they haven't been practiced, uh, practicing since they were young, they mm -hmm. didn't know how to. Similarly with fasting, I repeatedly say, even with youngsters, it is important to practice. Fast uh, a few hours, uh, fast until midday, fast only from drinking, then fast from eating, and so on, until it becomes very normal and affordable. So it is important to practice uh, once you believe that your child can afford to fast. If, he, uh, if you think that he or she can observe fasting at the age of eight, then you should start fasting at the age of eight. Uh, and Whatever act of worship is done, even though it is not mandatory, he will be rewarded for it. Mm -hmm. Now, it only becomes obligatory upon a person to observe the ibadat of prayers and fasting and uh, hajj. Mm -hmm. Because the cat, even if the child is an orphan and is under age or under the age of puberty, still his wali has to pay zakah on his wealth. So with regards to hajj, uh, fasting, Rosa, or the prayers and namaz, uh, it is very important to practice and it only becomes mandatory upon attaining the age of puberty. Wallahu alam. Okay, we have Sister Um Hamdan from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Salaamu alaikum, Sister. You're live on Askuda. Uh, I need to ask uh, about my next uh, uh, fasting, uh, like my father, Rosa, uh, like uh, four. Uh, four Sister Hamdan, five. can you raise your voice a bit? Okay, uh, I need to ask about my, about my missed uh, Rosa Ramadan. Okay. I missed uh, five, six years back when I was pregnant and then, you know, feeding and everything. And at that time, I could not uh, uh, complete it or uh, keep uh, my Qadar mm -hmm. Ramadan. Okay. Now, uh, I, I want to uh, finish all these, uh, my missed Ramadan. Mm -hmm. I need to ask, uh, do I just need to uh, keep the uh, fasting? Or okay. uh, do I need to pay fidya for these two? Like two okay, two, I got it. Thing? Okay, Jazakallah Khair, Sister Um Hamdan there from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I think the next question from Sister Madio would correlate with this question as well. She says, I started to fast when I was 17, I started to fast when I was 17 years old. What can I do with regards to the fast when I miss, that I missed when I was younger? Obviously, uh, the age of 17 have already passed the age of puberty, maybe a couple of years later. Mm -hmm. So in this condition, you owe uh, fasting or making up all the days which you missed, whether it's one Ramadan or two or three Ramadans, mm -hmm. and you can uh, spread them out. You don't have to fast them consecutively. You can fast every other day or perhaps uh, Mondays and Thursdays, and this is all what you owe. 
uh, in addition to tawbah, obviously, uh, since everybody should be informed that uh, once you attain the age of puberty, there are certain ibadat that you must fulfill. Uh, that is uh, pertaining fasting after uh, attaining the age of puberty if somebody did not get to fast on time. Okay, next we have Sister Jawairiya from the UAE. Assalamu alaikum, Sister, you're live on Askuda. I'm a former Christian and I converted to Islam, alhamdulillah. So I have a, a question that uh, mostly all my Christian friends keep on asking me and I really don't know how to answer. Okay. Uh, the first question is that uh, they say that uh, in the Quran, in the the cow in verse uh, 62, it says that uh, all Christians and uh, Jewish will go to heaven, I, I mean, will basically go, no matter if they are Muslim or not, and they keep on saying on that in the Quran somewhere else in front. Mm -hmm. And the other question is that in the Quran it doesn't actually say the word Mecca, it says the inviolable place of worship. So how do you know, that, I mean, that uh, from where the Mecca came, the, the word itself, and how do you know that's the place of worship? Okay. Okay. Okay, Zizakhla Khair, Sister Jawairi, there from the UAE. Um, sister Um Hamdan and uh, Sister Majid's question is, um, how should a woman who w went through experienced pregnancy uh, consecutive years, and uh, at the end, uh, the, all the fast built up? Yani how do okay. they go about? Uh, if somebody was sick, mm -hmm. or for women who happen to be pregnant or breastfeeding, Mm -hmm. uh, they're exempt from observing fasting whenever it is Ramadan if they have a hard time mm -hmm. or if it affects negatively their health or the health of their child or the fetus or the embryo. I'm saying that because some people think it is once a woman is pregnant then it is for granted they just uh, skip fasting even if uh, in the early days or if she can afford uh, to fast. Uh, so if a woman thinks that she cannot afford fasting or that might uh, affect her or her baby in this condition, it is permissible for her to skip fasting. And once she is able to make up those days after uh, giving birth and after finishing the breastfeeding and so on, she must make up those days as long as she is healthy and she can afford to do that. Some of the scholars uh, said if a woman postpones uh, making up the fasting until another Ramadan passes by without a valid reason, then she owes in addition to the qada or making up the days a fidya or feeding one miskin per each day. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a common opinion, uh, even though we cannot really back it up with a proof. So if, uh, if, if a woman just makes up those days and ask Allah for forgiveness for delaying without uh, a justification or a valid reason, inshallah that would be sufficient. But if a woman was not able to fast because continuously sick or after giving birth, uh, uh, breastfeeding, and she could not fast until next Ramadan or the Ramadan after, so she had a valid reason, it would be only sufficient for her to make up the days which she missed uh, of the previous Ramadan or Ramadans. Okay, next we have Sister Um Kulthum from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Sister, you're live on Ask Kuda. Yeah. Sister Salaam Um Kulthum. Alaykum. Wa alaikum as -salam. Go ahead, Sister. Please, uh, my question is not pertaining to fasting as that. Okay. Go ahead, ask uh, the question. I've asked this question before. Unfortunately, I was not, I was not opportuned for it to be answered. Okay. Go ahead, ask the question, please. I want to know what is the ruling of Islam on forex trading. On? Forex trading. That means exchange of currency in the okay. uh, through okay. the internet. Okay. Currency exchange. Sell of currency. Okay. And okay. then, secondly, please, uh, I would like to know what is the ruling of Islam on a woman keeping her hair short. Okay. Jazakallah khair. Sister Um Kulthum there from Nigeria. Abu Rithwan from India, he says, can I pay my zakah to relatives? Yes, as a matter of fact, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says in the hadith, as-sadaqatu ala al-miskini, sadaqa, was-sadaqatu ala dil qurba sadaqatun wasila. So there is a greater reward in giving your zakah to your kins or kinship or relatives. Mm -hmm. Giving uh, your zakah or mandatory or voluntary charity 
to uh, regular people who do not have any relationship to you, you receive a reward of giving in charity for that. But the reward will be doubled if you give this zakah, which you owe, mm -hmm. or the voluntary charity to somebody who happened to be your relatives, it will be the reward of giving in a charity and the reward of upholding the ties of your kinship. Okay, and the second question, uh, he says, what happens to the person who dies in Ramadan? And he mentioned, what is this place in Al-Barzakh? Al-Barzakh is an Arabic term which means the life between this life and the resurrection. Mm -hmm. So it is basically the life in the grave. Mm -hmm. And as believers, we believe that there is some sort of life in the grave where a person will be exposed either to a reward or punishment in his or her grave. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, even though the Pharaoh and his soldiers or horse were drowned, but he said in Surah Al-Ghafir, النَّارُ يُعْرَضُونَ عَلَيْهَا غُدُوًّا وَعَشِيًّا وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةُ أَدْخِلُهُ آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ أَشَدَّ الْعَذَابِ So he informed us that they're being tortured day and night in their graves. Mm -hmm. Whether this grave happened to be the sea, they were drowned, or swallowed by a fish, or incarnated and their ashes were spread all over, or buried in a regular grave, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do all things as He created us the first time from nothing. Then on the Day of Judgment, there is an actual and a severe torment. So there is a torment in, in, in the Barzakh for the disbelievers and the sinners, as well as a reward, joy and delight for the believers and the obedient. But with regards to those who die in Ramadan, there is no specific indication that they receive any exemption or any special reward other than the fact that if somebody happened to die while he or she were fasting because the Prophet wasallam said whosoever in the hadith which is narrated by Hudayfa and collected by Imam Ahmad in his Muslim and it is a sound hadith Whoever says La ilaha illallah wa yukhtamu lahu biha, meaning it is his last statement. He says La ilaha illallah, then he dies, dakhala al jannah. And whoever fasts yawman, whoever fasts for one day, seeking the pleasure of Allah, fa yukhtamu lahu bih, and he dies in this condition while fasting, mm -hmm. or his last deed was fasting, dakhala al jannah, he shall enter paradise. And similarly, one who gives in a charity and it is his last deed, he will also enter paradise. But as far as dying on certain days, whether in Ramadan or outside Ramadan, there is no sound indication that any person will be exempt. Except in one hadith which talks about dying on Friday or the night of Friday, mm -hmm. which is at Thursday after sunset. And until sunset of Friday, any time in between, if a believer, an obedient servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dies during this time, this is a good sign he will be exempt from the trial of the grave. That doesn't apply to uh, the criminals, doesn't apply to the non-Muslims or those who died in a state of disbelief, mm -hmm. whether you die on Laylatul Qadr or you die on any other night. Well, if a Muslim dies on Laylatul Qadr, while he was on a coffee shop or drinking or playing or gambling or dating, then that doesn't apply to a person who is either wicked or criminal or sinner. Wallahu a'lam. Okay, and his third question was, uh, what is the flag of Islam? The raya mm -hmm. or the flag, it varies. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to have a raya which was made of black color, of fabric, Mm -hmm. uh, Murtin li Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. And sometimes he appointed a raya which was yellow color, actually several uh, yellow flags, he appointed them to Al Ansar. So it depends on uh, the, the Muslim state and the Khalifa if they choose uh, a flag that to write on it, La ilaha illallah Muhammad or Rasulullah, to remind the believers with their uh, belonging, with their commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with their identity, that would be best. Okay, next we have Sister Mariam from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. I would like to uh, I would like to ask a question about reading the Quran. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm reading this uh, book, uh, this Quran, but it's trans uh, transliteration. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it allowed or not? Sometimes I'm reading the English or the one with the transliteration because I could hardly read Arabic uh, writing. Although I'm studying in Daraliman, 
School mm. for Quran mm-hmm. for women. I'm a Filipino national. Okay. Uh, so I would like to know if still allowed to read the Quran by this way. Okay. And another question is, I mm-hmm. have been divorced for three years, mm-hmm. and uh, I would like to know if I could go with my son for Umrah, alone okay. with my son who is an eight-year-old boy. Okay. And okay. Uh, another question is, if uh, how do if I am go, if I have I have no plans of getting married yet, but inshallah, but I don't have yet my divorce papers. Mm-hmm. What do I do about it? Okay. Okay. Jazakallah khair, mm-hmm. Sister Mariam there from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I would like to tackle the first question pertaining the Quran because it is very important. A vast majority of our viewers who are non-Arab mm-hmm. uh, are concerned about reading the Quran, particularly in Ramadan, mm-hmm. the month in which the Quran was revealed. Yes. Especially when we know that Ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, recite the Quran for, for each letter you recite you receive a hasana and the hasana will be rewarded for ten times more well, and he emphasized that the letter is not a word a letter is a letter so alif lam mim is not a letter rather alif is a letter lam is a second letter and mim is a third letter so there are tons of hasanat and good deeds for reciting the Quran. In addition to, that reward will be doubled and multiplied without limit, particularly in Ramadan. And that's why we say, reading the Quran for non-Arab via the transliteration should be a mean, not a goal. Mm -hmm. A mean, you should not settle for that. You should not say, Alhamdulillah, I'm reading it. Because the goal is to read it properly Mm -hmm. and to understand it as well. Is it easy to achieve? It is indeed very easy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكَرِ Allah made the Qur'an so easy to be recited, to be read, to be understood for those who are eager to learn it. Yes. And I would like to remind the viewers that the Arab are minority amongst Muslims. Those who are born as Arab, are almost 18% of the Muslim population. So the vast majority, 82 or plus, more or less, are non-Arab. And the Quran is a universal book. The Quran was revealed to entire mankind and the jinn. So exert a little effort and make it steady, even if it is a little steady and consistent. Sure and certainly you will be able to recite the Quran properly and also understand its meaning, inshaAllah. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-Mahir bil-Qur'an ma'a safarat al-kiram al-barara. One who recites the Qur'an with excellency. He is fluent in reciting the Qur'an. His ranks, or his rank is with the ranks of the angels, the purified uh, noble angels. Wal-ladhi yatata'ta'u fihi wa huwa alayhi shaq falahu ajaran. While one who recites the Qur'an, he's learning, he's stuttering, he finds it hard, he receives double reward. It doesn't mean that you should settle for that and say, why shall I learn to recite fast if I can get double reward while I'm slow? Because while the turtle is crawling, a rabbit would reach its goal or the end of the race in no time. So learn how to recite the Qur'an properly. This is a book of all the believers. Okay, Sister Amina from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. You're live in Askuda. Wa alaikum assalam. Please, me, I know that. What do I have to do? Uh, because my plan is to recite the whole of the Quran in each four days. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's very easy for me. I am capable of doing so. Mm-hmm. But because I have to do many different dishes for the family to have dinner each day at night. Mm-hmm. During the day, I became so busy, so I spent much time in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Later on, I became unhappy because my target will not be achieved and my days are running. Mm-hmm. The Ramadan is almost mm-hmm. going. The days yeah. are going. Yes. So. Okay. Okay. Okay, if you can just add to what, what she says, because we're st- still talking on the Quran. She says she has a plan to recite the whole of the Quran, but she finds herself getting too busy during the day preparing for the family. She finds find a lot of time being wasted in the kitchen. 
she wants your advice. May Allah bless you for helping the family. Also, there is a great reward, and many, many people cannot find time to uh, recite one juz a day. One juz would take 40, 45 minutes if you're reciting slowly, mm. and average reciter would take uh, 40 minutes approximately. But if somebody says, I can find even 40 minutes, I say then, if you can have an iPod or any recorder, tape uh, player or a CD player, and play the Quran and listen to it while you're doing the physical work, the physical activities, because your mind can be also listening and, uh, and paying attention. In addition to nowadays the Quran, there is an audio Quran with a beautiful uh, recitation, and verse to verse meaning interpreted into English. So if you can have that or download it uh, uh, online and uh, play it on your iPod while you're working, while you're uh, driving, while you're traveling, that will be great because listening to the Quran as well is a great act of worship. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yes. once said to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, recite the Quran unto me. He said, Ya Rasulullah, shall I recite it unto you while it was revealed to you? He said, yes, I like to hear it from other than myself. So he started reciting until he reached a verse of Surah An-Nisa. He looked at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa eyes, they were overflown with tears. So listening to the Quran is also a great act of worship. Okay, we have Brother Sabir from Cyprus. Assalamu alaikum, brother. You're live on Ask Huda. Just I, I, I ask you, I want to ask you one question. Mm -hmm. That every Muslim know that the uh, pork, I'm talking about the top pork and pig is haram. We, we cannot teach. But uh, the Christians, uh, they, see, they ask me many times, they ask mm -hmm. you ask many times the question, why the haram? Because you eat other things. Why do you know the please, uh, some technical or scientific some there are reasons why we Muslims don't eat the pig and pork mm. like this. Mm. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Barakallah fiqh. Brother Sabir there from Cyprus. Bro Brother Abu Sahel from the UAE, he says um, someone left money with them for a long time. Should we pay his account on such a money if it reaches the Nisab? If this money is given to you as a loan, it's different than if it is given to you as an amana or a trust that is deposited with you to keep. Mm -hmm. So if it is a deposit, to keep, then you owe nothing on it because you're not benefiting out of it anyway. And the person who must pay the zakah on this amana if it attains an isab by itself or in addition to other positions is the owner of this money or amana. Okay, um, and then he says, if a person who died left money with one of his siblings, is it a must for that person, that sibling, to share this money with other siblings? We first have to determine he left that money with his uh, sibling or his relative or his son or daughter for what purpose because if somebody gave somebody in his life a gift or paid him to settle his debt or assisted him in his financial crisis or hardship this is after his death if it is not payable back then he doesn't have to distribute it amongst the ears but if it is something that he trusted him and he saved with him as an amana, in case anything happens to him, then it has to be distributed among the ears, even if this person is not one of them. Even if he will get no share whatsoever, because this is not his money. Wallahu alam. Okay, next we have on the line, Sister Saqiba from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. You're live on Ask Huda. Sister Saqiba, are you, are you with us? Oh, I think we lost the Saqiba. Okay, Um Abdurrahman from Qatar, she says, I made khula, khula with my husband and we are separated. And she says even when she was, during, she was pregnant with the, with the son that they have, her husband was asking her to abort the child. Mm -hmm. um, she says, what is my role in, keeping that re, uh, my, in helping my son to keep the relationship with my dad? Should I allow him to have relation with the father's family and so forth? Yes, of course you should. And be, uh, please do not remind him that his father was actually asking you to abort him because it would leave a bitter taste in his mouth and I don't think any person would like to meet such a father. But anyway, all of us do make mistakes and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all sins. Alhamdulillah, he did not comply with his instruction and uh, your son is alive. It is your role to uh, remind him that he has a father and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him mm -hmm. to be dutiful to his parents, not only to his mother. 
Okay, Brother Muhammad from Egypt. He wants to know what is the ru Islamic ruling on Quranic competition. And he was mentioning the Quranic competition on TV channels and so forth. That's perfectly fine if it is with regards to memorization or reciting the Quran with the proper tajweed or beautiful voices uh, and giving prizes for that. There is no problem whatsoever. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encouraged us in the Quran to race and to compete towards good righteous deeds towards achieving paradise. He said, وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ in Surah Al-Mutafifin, let the competitors compete towards heaven. So when we make competition, that encourages everybody, the competitors, to memorize Quran. Um, I guess I'm aware of uh, some of those competitions, uh, such as Al-Ahfaz, the one who has the greatest memory, or memorizes the Quran and does the least mistakes. So that is permissible, definitely, and there is no problem with that. And the prize that they collect is 100% uh, uh, is lawful. Okay, and the second question is, um, what is the ruling on playing football for money? Well, it depends. Uh, meaning, if uh, I, I play for a club mm -hmm. and uh, with the proper etiquette, with the proper Islamic rules, I'm not showing aura, I'm not wasting my prayer times and all of that. Because there are a lot of shubuhat and doubts and even haram, especially when you take this as a profession. When you know that you're going to play uh, a tournament or final or a game, uh, while it's a prayer time. I'm not talking about even regular five daily prayers. I'm talking about Friday, mm -hmm. where the, the crowd would attend from 10 or 11 a.m. And they would last sitting in the stadium until it is Asr or past the, the, the game. What happened to Jumu'ah? So you cannot say, well, it's not my fault. I'm just playing. And uh, recently we hear some awful fatawas from irresponsible people saying that it is okay for professional soccer players or football players to break their fast because they are similar to workers. This is a new deen. Definitely this is a new deen that has nothing to do with our deen. That we all know what allows a person to skip fasting if he is sick or traveling or يطيقونه, they, they, they will die or they will get extremely ill if they continue fasting because of senility or old age. But for playing soccer or basketball or swimming tournament, you, you break your fast. This is something that's not stated in, uh, in our deed. So um, I like to play soccer. I like to play basketball. I like to uh, uh, do sports. And I like to have my children and all the youth of the Muslim Ummah and ladies as well in private areas uh, while wearing their proper uh, dress code and so on to, to, to practice sports. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam raced with Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha, it is perfectly fine. But the problem is, whenever any of those games divert you from the ibadah, which is due in a specific time, then it becomes haram immediately. Mm. Any fard, not just uh, Jumu'ah, <coughs> whenever it's a waste of time, time, excuse me, or whenever there is a bet that mm. the winner mm -hmm. will collect the, the payment from the loser, then this is gambling. So it's a combination of uh, haram and haram and haram. But if you're playing this for fun and the club is paying you or the sponsor is paying you or somebody is paying the winner without uh, any cost on the loser, then this is halal. Wallahu alam. Okay, next we have Sister Muniba from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Sister, you're live on Askuda. Sister Muniba? Hello. Yes, go <coughs> ahead with your question, please. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. Sister Muniba? If someone has a husband, the husband is not free. Sister Muniba, you have to turn the volume of your television set down, please. Hello? I think we have to cut you off, Sister Muniba. I'm very, I have to apologize for this, but to all the viewers, if you're calling in, make sure you turn the level of your television, the volume of your television set down, please, before calling, because it makes a, a feedback and we can't understand your, your question. However, we'll, we have Um Muhammad as well from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Sister, you're live on Ask Huda. Sister Um Muhammad? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. Assalamu Go ahead, ask your question, please. I, heard, I, went, to, I went for a subpoena and I had a fatwa. Okay. So the, in the fatwa, the Sheikh said that a breastfeeding mother is exempted from fasting. Please, I want some clarifications about that. 
Okay. Okay, the Zakhla Khair. And that she does not have to pay back. Okay. Okay, the Zakhla Khair. Sister Umm Muhammad there from Nigeria will take a short break here on Ask Hudan. We'll be back right after this. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Closing the Gap Why Closing the Gap? In this program, Sheikh Yusuf Estes and Omar Dunlap are going to discuss how to bridge the gap between peoples of different cultures and orientations. The gap between males and females, Muslims and non-Muslims, the East and the West. Human beings feel like that they're being slighted one way or the other. The gap between the youth and the elders, the gap between various uh, status in working, the work field, and uh, education, and then trying to provide solutions for these particular problems. All of this and more in Closing the Gap in Ramadan on Hoda TV. to strive to know the ruling of the Sharia on a particular incident. Why scholars had to put a lot of effort trying to figure out how to give the ruling on such topics and issues. Islam tells you to look good, to smell good. The reason of the recession was the collaboration between insurance companies and the banks. Some scholars, though stated that it is permissible for you to insure because you're compelled to do this by the government by law but you're not allowed to benefit from the insurance policy women around the prophet what do you know about women in Islam? Do you know the role that women played in Islamic history? Sheikh Ismail Rafai will relate the stories of the Prophet's wives in the program, Women Around the Prophet. Abu Bakr as Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with him, the person he decided that this Quran should stay with and be left with was none other than our mother Hafsa bint al Khattab. So this whole Quran was left with her. This is a great trust. Khadija bint Khuwaylid. She is Afqah Nisa'il Ummah. She's the most knowledgeable of this Ummah. Because she is my mother, your mother, and the mother of all the believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Women Around the Prophet in Ramadan on Hoda TV. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching Ask Huda. Just a quick reminder of our telephone numbers: zero zero two zero two three eight five 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 two four eight or two four nine. Or you can write to us at ask. That's a s k at huda dot tv. Sister Um Aisha, doctor from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, she wants to know if a woman can make Umrah whilst experiencing experiencing her monthly period. Uh, it is permissible, but uh, while she is in the period she's not allowed to perform tawaf mm -hmm. so if a woman entered even in a state of ihram while she is in uh, or after attaining the ihram mm -hmm. assuming the intention of ihram she started her period and she entered mecca she will stay in her hotel or in her room doing dhikr and tasbih and istighfar and making dua until the period is over she takes a ghusla then she can perform the tawaf and uh, do the sa'i and the umrah is over so she will be still in a condition of ihram until she finishes the ceremonies of uh, umrah similarly in hajj mm -hmm. nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said awesome. to aisha may allah be pleased with her when she was in a condition like that when she was performing hajj with him mm -hmm. he said do everything that the hajj the pilgrim would do uh, except 
ألا تطوفي except uh, for tawaf because the tawaf is similar to uh, salah and since the tawaf uh, precedes a sa'i that means she should hang around until she is purified by taking the ghusl after the period then do the tawaf then the sa'i afterward okay sister Jawairi from the UAE she says um, Christian friends mentioned to her that in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah that Christians and Jews would go to heaven and she doesn't know how to reply to them the Quran never said so number one mm -hmm. Whenever the Quran says in the Ladina in this particular verse, even some Muslims may misunderstand it. It says, Verily, the believers and the Hadu, the Jews, the Christians, was Sabi'in, those who used to worship angels, or uh, it's, a, it's a religion that was coming in, in Iraq before Islam. Man mm amana. -hmm. Man amana, there is a condition. Only those who believe mm -hmm. from amongst all of them, from amongst the Jews, from amongst Christians, from amongst pagans, man amana billahi wa liyawm If they believe in Allah and in the last day, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them their wages on the day of judgment, will admit them his paradise, etc. But uh, uh, for this believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no reward, rather there is a punishment. The Quran says, لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ بَنُ مَرْيَمْ In one verse. Those who said that the Messiah, the son of Mary, is Allah, have disbelieved in Allah. Mm -hmm. They disbelieve in the oneness of Allah. لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ ثَالِثُ ثَلَاثَةٌ Those who said that Allah is one of three, have disbelieved as well. And uh, he said about the Jews, وَقَالُوا لَن تَمَسَّنَا النَّارُ إِلَّا أَيَّامًا مَعْدُودًا They claimed that even when we go to fire, we would only stay there for seven days. قُلْ أَتَّخَذْتُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَهْدًا Do you have a covenant from Allah that he assured you that Jews will not be punished, will not enter fire? No, as a matter of fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, when they said, نَحْنُ أَحْأَبْنَاءُ اللَّهِ وَأَحِبَّاؤُهُ They said, we are the chosen children of Allah. This is what the Quran said, quoting their statement. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلِمَ يُعَذِّبُكُمْ بِذُنُوبِكُمْ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ بَشَرٌ مِمَّنْ خَلَقُ So in this case, if you are the children of Allah and His chosen people, why does He torture you? Why does He punish you? بَلْ أَنْتُمْ بَشَرٌ مِمَّنْ خَلَقْ يَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says For any non-Muslim Let him be a Jew or a Christian or following any religion Who dies and does not believe in the oneness of Allah Along with the Prophethood of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم He will not find the fragrance of paradise of Al-Jannah These are the statements of the Quran and the Sunnah so there is nowhere in the Quran that says other than those who believe in the oneness of Allah and in the message of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi will be eligible for his mercy. Furthermore, there are a couple of verses and both of them are in Surah An-Nisa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in one of them, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَن يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ وَمَنْ يُشْرِكَ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدِ افْتَرَى إِثْمًا عَظِيمًا Any sin is subject for forgiveness, even if it is adultery, even if it is stealing, if the sinner repents unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, acknowledges his mistake and repents sincerely to Allah, Allah will accept his repentance and will pardon him and forgive him his sins, except for one sin, mm -hmm. which is setting partners to Allah in worship. Not believing in the oneness of Allah makes a person not eligible for any mercy whatsoever. وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا This mercy is limited for those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu a'lam. Okay, next on the line we have Sister Fatima from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. You're live on Askuda. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Ramadan Kareem. Wa alaikum, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My question is, is it compulsory for women to pay that the zakah on gold on her own, even Fa if she is not a working woman. Okay. Fatima, 
And how old are you? Eight years old. Do you know what compulsory means? Yes. What does it mean? Necessary. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I will answer you, inshallah. Barakallahu feek. Mashallah. Jazakallahu khair. Wa jazakallahu. Barakallahu feek. Barakallahu feek. Mashallah. May Allah bless you, Sister Fatima. And your um, family. Amin. Amin. Uh, Sister Jawairia says also these friends told her that the word Mecca is not mentioned in the Quran. And why do we hold it as a place of worship? Okay. Whenever we have questions, we would like to, uh, uh, to present an answer. Mm -hmm. The word Mecca is definitely mentioned in the Quran. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in one verse, in some verses which the Mecca was mentioned explicitly by at least one of its names because Mecca and Bekka is the same. In awwala baytin wudi'a linnas ilal ladhi bi Bekkata mubarakan wa hudan lil alameen. Here is Mecca is mentioned in the Quran. Surah Ibrahim verse number 37. When Ibrahim alayhi salam was ordered by Allah to take Hajar and Ishmael, and deposit them in this deserted place. He made a dua while he was fixing to leave. Rabbana innani askantu min zurriyati biwadin ghayri di zar'in inda baytika al-muharram. Rabbana liuqimu salata faj'al afidatan min al-nasi tahwi ilayhim. This ayah is talking about Mecca through indication. Baytika al-muharram, the sacred house. Uh, and the ayah says, Rabbana inni askantu min dhurriyati biwadin ghayri di zar'in inda baytika al-muharram. So in this case, it is mentioned. And it is mentioned that people should face it in the direction of the prayer. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَوَلِّ وَجْهَكَ شَطَرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ Towards Al-Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca. So Al-Masjid Al-Haram, which mm -hmm. is uh, located in Mecca, was mentioned repeatedly in the Quran. وَحَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُمْ فَوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ شَطَرَةً And wheresoever you are, you must face it in the prayer. So the question should not be uh, challenging. Uh, that It was never mentioned in the Qur'an. The, the question should be, is there anywhere in the Qur'an where there is an indication that Mecca is a sacred place and that we should face it uh, in our direction of the prayer and it is a special place different than any other place and so on. Mm. But challenging questions from uh, people who have no knowledge whatsoever, it sounds and feels silly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Um Kulthum from Nigeria, she asked, um, what is the ruling on uh, trading in currency exchange? It is lawful with the following conditions. Mm -hmm. If it is gold for gold for innocence, golden coins, then it's got to be the same amount, and at the same time, yadan biyad. Mm -hmm. You give me 10 golden dinars or dollars and you take 10 from me all for new or whatever if it's got to be the same amount because gold preserves the same value whether it's old or new uh, manufactured or not so it's got to be hand by hand and the same amount but if it is different values gold for silver mm -hmm. then the only condition will be in the same sitting in the same meeting for currency exchange of course, obviously, we cannot have the same value because the currency varies from a place to another. Some countries, one currency or one coin or one uh, unit would be worth of 10 or 20 of other countries. So the only condition in this case would be at the same time, I go to the uh, money exchange place, I give him the amount and he gives me my money in the at the same time. Or otherwise, the delay is considered riba. And that's called Riban Nasa or the delay in time. Okay, Sister Melanie from Germany. Salaamu Alaikum, Sister, you're live on Ask Koda. So my English maybe is not uh, so good. Um, well, I am married with a Muslim man. Okay. And um, I am originally from Germany. And okay. we live in a Muslim country. But um, here it's always hard to practice the is Islam good. They make, um, make it not easy for us in the way of making dawah, to wear mm -hmm. the beard, headscarf, many things. Mm -hmm. And we have the opportunity right now to go to my country, Germany. And um, we know that it's more free there for practice um, Islam, making dawah, headscarf. And our question is, or my question is, if it's um, allowed for us um, to go to a non-Muslim country, and um, my second question is related. So where are you living at the moment? Um, I cannot say it. My husband would be in trouble. 
with the government, but mm. it, um, it's in the Maarif area. Okay. okay. And uh, my second question is related to the first one. Um, okay. The mom of my husband, she don't like, and um, she intervals so much. And we wanted to ask if she has the right to us to say no and to forbid us to go um, to Germany. Okay, okay. Zakla khair, sister Manini, there from Germany. Okay, we have Brother Saeed from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum, brother. You're live on us. Good. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum, assalamu alaikum. Salam, Saeed. How are you? Yeah, Sheikh. Uh, alhamdulillah. I'm fine. Uh, Sheikh, I, I need to have few clarification actually, especially on zakat. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I need to know basically zakat is based on the pure cash basis, or I, maybe you will understand the accounting concept is or on accrual basis. Mm -hmm. Say, for example, if I have given certain amount of cash to my friend, mm -hmm. or I have paid advance rent to my landlord, mm -hmm. which comprises, say, for example, six months. Mm -hmm. So, do I need to pay? Uh, my zakat on the whole advance rent that is one question number one you already Second, paid it I already paid it then you don't owe any zakat on it once is zakat is due any money that went out you spend it even as an advance payment then you don't owe any zakat on it you only pay the zakat on what you actually possess or what you lend to a debtor who is capable to pay back even after a while based on your agreement. Right. right. Okay. okay. One more question, uh, Sheikh. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, this is uh, what I understand because the card is uh, uh, liable on the amount which is already due one year. Okay, yes. Right? On, the, on all the cardable items. Mm -hmm. So say, for example, if I have my salary for last three months in my bank account, mm -hmm. Okay, so do I need to pay my cash in hand for the last three months, say for example? Okay. Or I need to wait for, you know, for one year to pass. Okay. okay. And there are two ways to do it because this is called al-malul mustafad or an earned money, which is not as a result of a natural growth of your uh, actual position. Like if you have an investment somewhere else or stock or, 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 or. So the salary did not come as a result of the growth of your money, rather it is uh, uh, an earning that you earn for the work or the labor that you've done. So in this condition you have one of two choices. The first choice is any money that comes from the same category, cash for cash, as long as it is before the year round, which is the how due, before the, the date on which your zakah is due, then you pay zakah on it as well with the rest of your position. And the second opinion says, well, you count that you received it in Sha'ban while the zakah is due in Ramadan, so you pay the zakah on this salary next Sha'ban. And you receive <coughs> another payment in Rajab, for instance, so you, receive, you pay the zakah on this salary next Rajab. And this is very troubling and very, very problematic. And by the end, you're paying the zakah anyway. So the easiest way and method and the safest for you is that once it is due to pay your zakah and you owe a zakah on the due date, you estimate all your positions, even the salary which you just earned perhaps a week before the due date of the zakah payment. And you pay zakah on the entire thing. Wallahu alam. Okay, Jazakallah Khair, Doctor, for being with us for your precious time here on Ask Code. And to all the viewers, we'd like to thank all those who participated in the program, either by calling or by just viewing the program. And if you have any other questions, you can write to us at us, that's ASK at Huda.tv. And don't forget the doors for supporting programs such as Ask Huda and any other program on Huda TV are still open. So you can write to us at support at Huda.tv. And don't forget to visit our website, www.huda.tv. TV. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If my love is attached to thee, then from sins I will be free. Each time my heart will beat, your name will resound with heat. Allah is my heart's speech, your mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance. Help.
help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test